want to share with you why we're celebrating. In just a few days, on April the 22nd, we're going to be offering courses and degree programs that are accredited in the European Union. In 2013, over 100 top intellectuals, professors, academics, independent writers, artists came together with a vision. And that vision was that we could, given our resources, create an alternative model to the current university and college model operating today, a model that requires students to go into masses amounts of debt. That model would be debt free. That model would be co-owned through the faculty, through staff, supporters like you, and through our graduates. Yes, that's right. Students who come into GCAS and study with us, they pay modest tuition levels, and when they graduate, those tuitions are converted into ownership shares. So instead of just getting a diploma and your regular university asking you each year to contribute to their capital campaign, we give you a diploma and shares, ownership shares, stock in GCAS College, so that not only are you not in debt, but you actually have assets when you graduate. Hundreds of people have been part of what we're doing. Thousands have come to our conferences. We've reached over a million people worldwide. We're on six continents around the world, not including Antarctica, but we're getting there. We've set up centers where we can do learning projects across national boundaries, across nations, across the walls and barriers. We've been able to do this with incredible amounts of effort. Early on, many people dismiss this as being too utopianistic. Well, the reason why we had to create this model was because of the crisis that has faced us in education. It's a crisis on almost every level, the crisis of debt. You see, back in the 70s in the United States, when they started to defund public education and even private education, the burden was put on the student. Now the student, instead of being judged by their intellect, are judged by their bank accounts. And if they don't have any money in the bank account, which let's face it, a majority of us don't have and didn't have, you had to go into debt. So now you have to get an education that must be geared towards profit making for yourself so you can actually pay back the debt. You see, that equation actually compromises education itself. And over decades of these loans being built up, now at 1.6, some say $1.7 trillion, now we're talking about a compromise in our security, in the national security, because the economy is in threat. People will have to delay getting cars, purchasing houses, getting married, forming families. This is no way to treat a society. And you see, because of this, you have emerged dangerous actors and campaigns that are trying to compromise free thinking. And therefore, because the state failed us, we had to do something. There's no other college that offers degrees and now offers degrees and courses that are accredited in the European Union that is co-owned, that's debt-free, and is built on our blockchain and crypto token, Gcashin. Now, I know some of you don't know what a crypto token is or cryptocurrency. Believe me, it's not Bitcoin. <laughs> it's just our way of incentivizing those who are super smart, but don't have even modest amounts of, of funds to support their education. Our currency allows folks from developing countries, people whose economic resources are extremely limited, to be part of what GCAS is doing because then they can earn tokens and use them to pay for tuition or keep them and when they graduate, turn in their tokens for stock and ownership in GCAS. We've already graduated some of our PhD students or we call them researchers, master's students, and we've launched our bachelor's program with incredible, amazing folks from all over the world. 
what are the power structures that allow for education to actually exist in the first place? And if those power structures are premised upon creating debt and harming students in the very courses that are taking to liberate their minds from, let's say, false beliefs or myths that are dangerous to democracy. In the very process of liberating oneself, you actually have to go into debt to banks or to the government. That's no way to treat education. And what that does over time is it creates a pretty fragile social fabric that, as we saw recently, nearly snapped. The other aspect about the mode of education production is when it's not premised on debt, when it's premised on bringing out the best in all of us, sharing together in owning the college itself, we all have then a totally different interest in mind. Our interest is cooperative, collaborative. Our interest is in developing quality research and protecting professors and our researchers from pressures for them not to question certain, certain powerful people or campaigns that pose a threat. If you belong to the traditional university, a lot of professors, especially if you're not tenured, can't do certain research because it's too threatening. Well, we've created a space that allows us to be free. We're not just an online learning platform. We're more than that. Of course, with COVID, we, we do teach online now through Zoom, as many other top universities do anyway. It's also important to understand how we're different than just other online schools. We don't just teach online, we teach in person. In fact, we've taught over 30 different in-person seminars and summer institutes where we get together, we cook together, we dance together, because you see, being together is crucial to celebrating each other's gifts. You can disagree, of course, with certain arguments, we hope so, but it's through that process that we become a community, that we become even better with each other than we are with just ourselves. We're very different than other online schools or platforms. We're different precisely because it's a question of the mode of production. Just simply getting on and, and listening to uh, a very famous professor or artist or author, that's great. You know, we're, we're not against that. In fact, we do that too. But where we're different is that we've created a co-ownership model together as, as an intellectual mode of production, like philosophy as creating the conditions for reproducing itself through our tokens, through co-ownership, and through other means that we're implementing and developing. So it's not just simply we come on and celebrate superstars. That's not what this is about. It's not about ego. It's about ecosystem. It's about the mode of material production. And insofar as we're able to reproduce ourselves without having to go into debt to banks and therefore compromise our pedagogical structure and procedure and integrity, we develop our own model, our own recreation of the intellectual endeavor. We would like to invite you to consider being part of what we're doing. You can be part of what we're doing by contributing, by getting involved, by taking courses, maybe even doing that degree that you've longed to complete. But you'll be doing it together and your degree will mean something because we're convinced and you would have to be the judge for this on your own. But we're convinced that the quality of education that we offer, especially with our mentorships and with our community and peer-to-peer -peer groups, we're convinced that our education is just as good and maybe even better than some Ivy League universities with endowments reaching into the tens of billions. We're doing it together. Because you see, it's not a question of simply a diploma to get a job. For us, it's a lifelong community endeavor. Learning never stops. It doesn't stop when you graduate. In fact, in a way, by being an owner of GCAS after you graduate, you continue to learn, continue to have access, and that very process of being involved in the learning itself also is intricate to and in, intertwined with decision-making about how we want to 
use our resources together. Education is one of the most important weapons in a country.